السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد In the third juz towards the end of it Allah سبحانه وتعالى talks about the story of Balut and Jalut what we know as Goliath now Banu Israel had 12 tribes in it Ya'qub alayhi salatu wassalam had 12 children and from the 12 children of Ya'qub alayhi salatu wassalam each one of them had a tribe that came out of it from Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam came the prophets and they say from Yehuda his eldest son came the kings now as time progressed the one family that had prophets coming out of it, it pretty much ended. Meaning that the lineage of prophets pretty much ended and there was just one girl that was left. And they would keep her secured that maybe she'll give birth to a prophet that comes out of it. And a time came that they got expelled from Majid al-Aqsa. And in the time of Musa alayhi salam, they possessed something called the Tabut. In English, or in the Bible, it's called the Ark of the Covenant. Anyone heard of the Ark of the Covenant? No? Never heard of it before? Abdullah, if you could just lower the volume a little bit. I think the volume is a bit too high. The Ark of the Covenant? What's the Ark of the Covenant? It contains like the Old Testament, the little tablets of it, right? And then the Messenger of the Messenger, like, kept it around. What's the special power about it? Now this is too low. Yes, yes. Very good. I'm saying very good to you and the sister at the same time. MashaAllah. So now, the tabut is something unique. Unique in the sense that anyone who possesses it will ultimately have victory in battle. And the Ark of the Covenant, according to the Old Testament, possesses this power. They also believe that no one can touch it. That if someone touches it other than a rabbi, then that person will die. And it was preserved and the Yehud, the Jews, believe that the Ark of the Covenant was lost and it's somewhere under the Temple of Suleiman That is why you hear about the excavation under Majd al-Aqsa, right? How many of you heard about that? What are they looking for? The Ark of the Covenant. Because the Ark of the Covenant, the Qur'an calls it the Tabut, they call it the Ark of the Covenant. Read up about, read up about it. And in there they consider it to have the ring of Sayyidina Suleiman that controlled the Jinnat. In there they believe it has the pictures of the different prophets inside it as well. There is a narration that the Sahaba went to Hiraqal. And this is the last time the Tabut is mentioned in our history. Hiraqal, Hercules, the king of the Romans, they went to him and they spoke about Rasulullah wasallam. So he goes and he pulls out this, tab, this, this box and from there he's pulling out pictures. And he says, is this Muhammad? They said, no. He said, is this Muhammad? He said, no. Showed him one man, looked angry. He said, is this Muhammad? He said, no. Showed him one. He said, Muhammad looks like this, but this isn't Muhammad. Then they showed him a picture. He said, this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, the man that you said looked like Muhammad, but wasn't Muhammad was Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa And the one that was a little upset, that looked, that was Sayyidina Musa alayhi wa and they said, in here, the pictures of the prophets are carried. Now you're thinking, how is it possible in the tablet, all the pictures of the prophets are carried, are there? Man, look at your iPhone. You have thousands of pictures inside there in your Google Photos. If they can fit all of it, you don't think that Tabut can fit it? The Tabut carried the staff of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, and it had tabarrukat inside it, the cloth of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, and it had this unique power to it. The Tabut was lost from Banu Israel. So when they wanted to go and fight against Goliath, they said, send us a prophet. So Talut was selected to be the leader from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi Shamuil alayhi salam, I believe was the prophet's name. Who said, Talut is going to be your king. Iba'at lana malikan, nuqatil. Now they looked at Talut and they said, Talut, he's nobody. He's someone, no money. He's a person, he's, we don't consider him with any respect, no degree, nothing. He said, no, bastatan fil ilmi wal jism. Talut has two qualities in him that a good, powerful leader has in him. Bastatan fil ilm, he has a lot of knowledge. Wal jism, and he's strong, he's like our Hamza Mumtaz, right? Not like us, we're little toothpicks. 
So Talut goes and takes this army, and one of the signs of Talut's kingdom, or his kingship, was that Allah had the Tabut brought from the enemy lines, and the angels brought it, and they left it in front of Banu Israel. So now Banu Israel know, knew that we have Talut, and therefore we're going to win. So now, you know in the beginning, like the first day of Ramadan, there's a big hype. Everyone jumps on, and there's, everyone is there. The first day, everyone is there. So that, for that army, Talut's army, everyone gathered together. And they said, we're ready to fight. Talut said, yeah, no, 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 no. These guys, everyone over here, no. Too big of an army. Quantity does not signify quality. Quality is better than quantity. So as they're going, they stop by a river. Ayn Jalut, it's called. Till today, it's in Jordan. Anyone been to Ayn Jalut? Anyone from Jordan here? You, guys, you know Ayn Jalut in Jordan, right? Till today, same river. Goes over there. And he says, okay, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبَتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرَ Allah has tested you with the river. Now imagine you're walking, and if you know Jordan, when it's cold, it's cold. When it's hot, Allahu Akbar. Now you remember, قُلْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمَ أَشَدُّ حَرَّ Only Jahannam is more hotter than that, right? It's a straight desert over there. <coughs> so now they're thirsty, they're walking, the army's there. He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبَتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرَ Now as an army, and any people who are going to stand and do something great, they need to have discipline inside them. He says, look, whoever drinks from here is not from me. And whoever drinks, Like they just take one grasp of water, that's fine. But if you drink to your full, you won't be, you cannot join this army. So now what happens is that everyone starts drinking. And anyone who even drank a little bit began drinking so much that their thirst wasn't quenched. And you know, after her, uh, I don't know what you guys eat, but I know that her father probably eat. What do you guys eat for iftar? What do you eat? Tell me what your iftar was today. One date. One date? Water. Water? And chicken. And chicken. <laughs> Hafiz Kabab roll. Kabab roll. <laughs> Fruits. Now, where's Abdullah? Abdullah, tell me. Or, or, Yazid, what was your iftar today? Oh, uh, like a date and then like rice. Rice and go on, going to continue. What else was there for iftar and chicken and all the other drinks and salad and mashallah? That iftar table is really big. The Hufad know their fast lasts till the night. They eat a little bit because they know if they eat a lot, what's going to happen? They're, th- they're going to fall asleep in salah. Because they know if they start overeating just a little bit, the Hufad know this because they have to lead the salah, the kalam of Allah. This is a bigger battle than what they fought. So now, there were only 313 people that remained. The same amount of? Badr. 313. It's a powerful number, 313. That's how many Rasuls there were. 124,000 prophets, 313 Rasul. 313 present in this army. 313 in Badr. 313 is a powerful number. It's also my area code. People ask me, are you from Detroit? I said, no, I just like the number. So now, they're going. 313, the rest of the army, 100,000 plus, they didn't join Talut. They're going, Jalut, Goliath. The way you heard biblical terms, the man was a juggernaut. And everyone is scared. Who's going to fight Goliath? So Talut says, okay, whoever defeats Jalut, Goliath, will marry my daughter. And because he was king, they would marry the princess, and that person would be the prince. So as they're going by, they cross by the family of Dawud, alayhi salam. And he was very young that time. And the other one is beautiful. The books of Qisas write, and Allah knows best, they say Dawud had blue eyes and blonde hair. Beautiful, like, they had just this goldish child. He also joined the group. And when the time came to fight, he grabs a stone and he says, Allahu Akbar, and he shoots the stone. And that stone goes and it hits Goliath. And Goliath falls down and he dies from there. فَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوطًا فَهَزَمَهُمْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And when they saw their champion fall from a bacha, they were like, oh, these are different people. And that is why till this day, the stones of the Palestinians is different. The stones of the Palestinians, they hit different. Come from Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. Now, Dawood alayhi salatu was salam kills Goliath. He later on marries the princess. He goes on and becomes a king. But you know what is the most insane thing? You see, history has a habit of repeating itself. 
and those who don't know history will end up repeating it. Fast forward a few thousand years. The Abbasid Empire reigned for about 500 years. And who came and crushed the Abbasid Empire? The Mughals. Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan and them. Undefeated. The army of Genghis Khan was undefeated. They walked into Baghdad. Baghdad was the capital of the Islamic Empire. Darul Hikmah was their book, their, their library that comprised of all the magnificent manuscripts you can imagine. How many of you have ever heard of the Hanafi book called Hidayah? So the famous Hanafi book, fifth book is called Hidayah. We all studied cover to cover. The story goes that the author Alama Murghainani, he's buried in Uzbekistan. He wrote a book on fiqh called Bidayat al-Muqtadi. It was very short. And he said, man, this is very difficult to understand. Someone said, you should write a commentary. So he said, okay, I'll write a commentary. He writes 80 volumes. Then he was like, oh, who's going to read 80 volumes? So then he comprised it into Hidayah. So alhamdulillah, I read it and I taught it. The Ottoman Empire ruled on Hidayah. The book that they ruled on was Al-Hidayah. Magnificent book. You can go to IACC's library. They have some of the volumes in English. And it's truly a, if you want to understand Hanafi fiqh, every masala he gives, he gives a dalil naqli, a dalil from Quran or hadith, a proof from Quran or hadith. Then he uh, complements it with dalil naqli, with a, with a dalil aqli, with a logical evidence. So everything he brings through hadith, Quran, and then logic at the same time. It's a remarkable book. That was also Darul Hikmah. All of these manuscripts, magnificent kitabs. So when the Mughal army came, the first day, they filled the river, the Tigris and Euphrates River, with the blood of the Ummah, and it became red. The next day, they dropped all the kitabs inside there, and the river turned black from the ink. And that book was also lost over there. And you know, when they entered, it was the Muslims themselves that betrayed one another. The Muslims themselves, they went, and they betrayed the Mughal, they betrayed the, the people that were at the court, they went and they betrayed, they told Genghis Khan and them, we will open the gates for you, you can come inside. He came and he, he just raised Baghdad to the ground. After the words, the man came and said, where is my prize? He said, kill him right now. He said, what are you doing? He said, you betrayed your own people, you end up betraying me too. And the interesting thing is that when they were killing the Khalifa at that time, they wrapped the Khalifa in a carpet. And then they stabbed him with a spear. Why? They said that the last time the blood of one of their Khalifa spilled on the ground, Sayyidina Uthman anhu, there was a narration that if a blood of the Khalifa falls, then 30,000 people would die. And Allah knows best the authenticity of it. But they were so fearful of this notion that they said, wrap him up in a cloth so his blood does not spill on the ground. He's killed. The Mughals go, rampage from Baghdad all the way, undefeated. And guess where they get defeated? ayn e Jalut. By who? The Mamluks. People who were slaves. Killed them where? Where Dawud killed Goliath. At Ayn Jalut. And that's where it stopped the Mughal advancement. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings everything back into full circle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fortify our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with discipline. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and afiyah. Just a reminder, inshallah, this Friday will be our first Jum'ah. So we request everyone to come and support us, inshallah. Jum'ah will be at 1.45. And then after that, every Friday we will have Jum'ah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.